here tonight on the 16th of March for our uh, council meeting. Um, you will know if you're tuning in right now that um, we are sitting uh, a considerable way apart. We're doing that in an attempt uh, to, uh, I guess, limit any um, potential germ transfer. Um, and we also apologise again to our gallery for sitting you so far apart and uh, looking a little unfriendly out there. But uh, we are doing what we can. So if I could please just begin with a statement of acknowledgement. We acknowledge the traditional owners of this land on which we are meeting and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging and to those from other communities who are here with us today. For they hold the memories, the traditions and the culture of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Item three is apologies and requests for leave of absence. At, at this stage, uh, councillors, if you had holiday books, you're not going anywhere. Uh, Item four is declarations under acts, regulations, codes or local laws. No. Item five is declarations by councillors of any conflict of interest. Councillor Mildred, I'm going to throw to you if you want to just list the item numbers and, um, and uh, that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, item 8.3, 8.7, 8.8, 8.9 .8, and 17.2. Thank you. Given there is a, a number there, if you would please remind me at each point, um, that would be terrific. Does anybody else have any other? Council Hall. Uh, yes, I have a conflict for item item 8.8. .8. Any other councillors? No? Um, I'm just going to check something. Um, councillors, there is an item in our um, confidential uh, business. It actually has um, some financial numbers in it that are confidential, um, but we can bring out a report without those numbers in it. So we have two methods of either doing it. We can bring that, um, which Kevin actually has an alternate with those numbers out of it, or we can actually deal with it in confidential and then bring the motion forward, including the amount that's actually awarded and to whom, um, post hearing it in confidential. Would, does somebody want to bring it out of confidential or would you rather hear it there and then bring out the motion? Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to leave it in confidential and bring it out with the result at the end. So unless I get a motion to bring it out, um, it's going to stay there and then what we will do is deal with that motion and then put a motion at the end of the council meeting. Councillor Lodi, do you want to speak? Can you turn your uh, microphone on? Yeah, I'll, I'll move a motion to bring it out of confidential. Um, and I acknowledge um, the numbers. I'm happy for the numbers to stay there, but I'd like to bring it out. I don't think there's a need for it to to sit in confidentiality myself, so just... Can I have someone second that? Yep, Councillor Mildred. Um, councillors, I'll just put it to the vote. We don't have discussion. Councillors, I will put that to the vote. All of those who wish to move it out of confidential, please raise your hands. Against, motion is carried. Um, it will become the new... 8.10. Thank you. Can you please issue that report with the numbers out of it for councillors? No, Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, councillors, item six is confirmation of minutes of the previous meeting. The recommendation is there on page three. Can I have someone move that? Thank you, Councillor Bennett. Can I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Watson. Does anybody wish to speak against those minutes? If not, I'll put them. All those in favour? Thank you. Motion is carried unanimously. Item 7.1 is actually a delegate's report, and that would be over to you, uh, Councillor Mitchell. I'm going to get you to um, put the record the recommendation, if you would, there, and then get a seconder, and then I'll have you speak to it, if that's okay. Thank you. You'll move. Can I have a seconder? Thanks, Councillor Bennett. Councillor Mitchell, floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 
to open, I must state that I'm patently aware that councillors uh, tripping off to seminars can raise an eyebrow or two from residents and ratepayers, and I'm very pleased to advise that the only cost to ratepayers for my attending a three-day seminar on Climate Emergency Summit in Melbourne was $165, being the registration fee. Secondly, my reason for attending the summit is that I am more than seriously concerned about the consequences for Wodonga, Albury, Australia and the world through climate change in action. Delayed or misguided action is also a concern. One of the key themes at this summit was the Safe Climate Declaration. This declaration called for a new approach to climate action in Australia, a response to match the scale of the threat as climate warming impacts and escalates across Australia and the world. As a councillor, I'm aware that Wodonga City is ahead of the game when it comes to addressing climate change. Our waste transfer station recycles 70% of everything that comes through its gates. We have replaced all our council responsible street lights with LED, saving tens of thousands of dollars, as well as reducing our carbon footprint. Our council investments are not placed with any institutions that have any form of carbon or fossil fuel liability. Council has a policy of purchasing hybrid vehicles when and where appropriate and that large solar farm will soon be established on the outskirts of our logic centre at Barnawatha. One of our Wodonga councillors, through an amazing effort, has also succeeded in bringing a national plastics recycling plant to Aubrey Wodonga from Europe. Council also believes in practising what we preach through example. If we don't do that, then how do we expect everyone else to be the same? Wodonga and Albury introduced the three bin system before most Victorian councils. This list goes on and on, however, when you hear the experts' voices from around the world, we must ask the question, is it enough? 88 councils in Australia have now declared a climate emergency. They have done this in part because it motivates them to start moving in the same direction that this council has been moving for a number of years now. We are living in a very uncertain time as the last few months has accentuated. The next few months will also see us fighting many unknowns. Our physical and mental health, as well as stress to our economy, will be major issues. However, Council still needs to be aware that the challenges and risk, and I accentuate risk, that it will face now and in coming years. In closing, I would like to ask that all councillors, both current and new after October this year, after the election, be adaptable to change and acknowledge same when and when necessary. I believe that this ever-increasing danger should be at the forefront of council's thoughts and actions, both now and as we move through these difficult times. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bennett, did you want to comment? Um, Councillor Mitchell, in terms of, I think there are other councils there showcasing things that they've done. Did you see anything particularly that other councils have done in this space that you think might be applicable to Wodonga taking more action? No, I didn't. There were, there were many, many things talked about, but they all came into play very similar to what we have already been doing. And so the, uh, there are additional things out there and there will be more additional information coming forward as, uh, as the um, uh, various associations that they spoke about are formed and then start debating you know, the ongoing issues. But uh, at this point, no, there were a lot of speakers that spoke about the, the, the imminent dangers, etc. but there was no real action plan that came out of it. Thanks, Councillor Bennett. Um, was there any other councillors who wanted to make comments? No? Uh, Councillor Mitchell, thank you on behalf of all the councillors for going and also for sharing some of that information via email um, and also uh, councillors for the continued discussion that we've had since that time. Councillors, uh, the recommendation is there. Can I ha uh, put that on the table? All those in favour? Thank you. Motion is carried unanimously. Item 8.1 is review of instruments of delegation. 
The uh, long recommendation is there on page 17. Uh, it is to accommodate the legislative changes. Can I have someone put a motion? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Thank you, Councillor Bennett. Councillor Watson. Oh, thanks, Madam Mayor. I'll be very brief. Um, Council operates a system of delegation uh, for effective operations of, uh, of operational at the operational level. And we as councillors from time to time need to review those uh, recommendations or that delegations authorities we give to our officers and our CEO. So this is basically a, a very uh, regular format that, that's going through. I won't talk to the detail in it, but um, uh, for us to operate uh, more effectively and to get um, uh, all the uh, off, uh, business of council out so we have um, times that it doesn't delay um, our, our, I suppose, our consumers. Uh, we have this delegation process so we don't have to wait from month to month and use we as councillors. So I'm more than happy to put this motion up um, and as, as a council, we review it from time to time so it's very transparent. Any other councillors? No, um, I'm just really pleased that we actually have Maddox do that work for us because when you look at the likes of page 13 and you see the detail and the number of acts that they've had to read, I'm glad it wasn't me. Uh, councillors, the uh, recommendation is there. All those in favour? Against? Motion is carried. Item 8.2, the Australian Day Citizen Award Guidelines. There is a recommendation uh, on page 20 to, in, uh, to adopt the guidelines that are actually included in your attachments, councillors. Um, can I, or do I have someone move that recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Watson. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Councillor Watson. Uh, Madam Mayor, the only thing I think we're probably changing a little bit to what the Australia Day Council um, policy is doing is um, uh, our Young Citizen of the Year age group, um, I'll just bring to our attention, we're keeping at um, 16 to 25, I think it's up to 30 year, under 30 years of age. Um, and I think we, as our discussions, we believe that the youth, uh, you know, um, are more the, yeah, the junior side of 25, um, so it's more appropriate. So that would be the only change I think uh, we're, we're doing. Thanks, Madam Mayor. The, uh the guidelines, as discussed uh, extensively at, uh, at various meetings, have changed very little. And so uh, I, I commend the recommendation. Other councillors? Councillor Bennett? Councillor Lowe. Who's going to arm wrestle for it? Councillor Lowe. Um, I'll preface this with... Um, um, I'll be endorsing this recommendation as well. But I just want to note that um, I, str I do struggle with age groups um, and I think it should be uh, merit-based or contribution-based to, to community as opposed to age-based. I think, I think you can get... Um, um, and we've ha had it this year already with our straw ambassador. You know, she's seven years old and she's probably doing more in her field than most of us are. And she, she's only seven. I think she's still only seven. Um, but she's probably an example of what um, a young person can do. And there's, you know, there's some young people out there that could be 13, 14, 15, 16 that have got far better heads on their shoulders and than 25, 26, 27-year-olds. So what is young? Is it 25? Is it 30? like we see stipulated, is it 35? Is it 12? So I find it, I, I, I struggle a bit when we apply age groups um, to our junior citizen of, of the year. And, and I realise there has to be one to go under that. Um, but I, th I think it should be open and left to merit or contribution based. That's probably um, my main point, point here. So I'd, be, I'd like to have it further discussion when it gets reviewed again around that. So, thank you. I have had a number of people over the years get in contact with me about uh, lowering the age and actually making it up to 30. And I did have a look at various other councils and um, the 
national awards and no one's consistent. It's all different ages. Some are as early as 12, 9 and up to 30. So there really is no consistency. And I did then go and actually specifically ask for feedback last week around this um, and again received 50-50 on, you know, heaps of different points of view. So I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. When I raised this this morning, though, um, the Mayor had a couple of good points and um, would you be able to repeat those ones just because you're the person who's been on the committee the longest and those points are really interesting? Thanks, Council Bennett. Um, so prior to being Mayor, where the Mayor always sits on the panel, uh, I was actually the chair for, I think, seven years of the 10 when I was a councillor. Um, and in that time, I hadn't seen somebody younger uh, or, or, you know, kind of on that verge of they were 14 and if they were only 16, then they could have actually applied. Um, and I hadn't seen a, a lot of people at that top end either of, say, 25 falling into 26, 27, 28, <coughs> that then no longer applied. And even coming through then as citizens of the year, um, you just didn't see that category. And one of the discussions over many years has been how can you compare a 16-year-old to a 25-year-old or to a 30-year-old because of life experience. And so in the number of years that I've been involved, that's always been the discussion. But I'm with you, Councillor Lowe, it's, it's incredibly hard because sometimes there is someone of merit. Um, and I, you know, but we have to have a criteria around it. I ask a question. Um, do you think maybe that you never seen one because because of the yeah so no one bothered to apply because of that criteria? I'll never know. <laughs> and just to make people aware, I didn't write these guidelines. Um, but yeah, well, I guess we'll never know. But it would be actually really great to see a national approach to this and actually have a, a national so that as people move through communities, as people are pretty transient and can move around uh, pretty easily. Um, it would be great to see. Um, I would love to see it 25 and under, because then that sort of opens it up. But um, there are many things I would be happy to fight about Australia Day, but I won't fight about the age bracket. Thank you. Did anybody else have any other comments? And just so you know, I actually know the chair of the Australia Day Committee at the federal level, uh, Danielle Roche. I'll actually get in contact with her and um, put the case to actually have a national approach. It is tasked with me. Uh, Councillor Watson, did you have anything you wanted to close with? No. no? Councillors, uh, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Thank you. Motion is carried unanimously. Item 8.3. I'm just going to read the title out and then I'm going to let you declare your interest. Item 8.3 is the tender for Fell Timber Creek Road reconstruction and sealing W1957-20. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the reason I've declared a conflict is because my business undertakes work for one of the tenderers. Thank you. And councillors, there is a recommendation on page 26. Uh, do I have someone move that recommendation? No, you're all sitting very far apart and giving me next strain. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Councillor Mitchell, thank you. Are uh, you happy to second? Yep, great. Councillor Watson. Well, Madam Mayor, like a lot of our tenderers that come before us in this council chamber, um, it's there before us and um, I'd like to put the, the motion. Thanks, Madam Mayor. In approving this recommendation, we're not only uh, accepting a competitive tender, we're, we're also um, giving jobs or 100 per cent of the, the jobs that result from it to local people, and uh, I'm ecstatically happy about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'd just like to add, uh, this is for the construction of um, the road up. Uh, well, up. There's a very steep incline from the car park area um, up at Felton Creek Road. If anyone's ever been up and down that road, it is a horrendous road, so it's a good thing that we're moving forward and getting it um, done. So it's great that we've got some um, funding for it too. 
Um, I'll be voting in favour of this recommendation tonight too. It's, it's, um, they're all quality tenders and they're all locals too, actually, which is a, another really good thing as well. Um, um, I too, like Councillor Hall, would like to see this road sealed as well because um, for cycling access, I know a lot of the cyclists out there will be happy that this road is getting um, bitumen over it because it will allow a, a bigger loop. At the moment, they, they ride out um, down the old Barney Road and, and back again because they don't actually have a closed loop. Um, this will enable those that are a little bit fitter and uh, to, to ride a, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a big loop, but it's a, it'll be a strong loop for strong cyclists. So it's, it's um, a win-win-win, not only for all the farmers out there in Indigo Valley to get home again too. So um, I'll be endorsing it as well. And it's also one of the first ones I've seen where it's actually the lowest tenderer as well. Councillor Watson? Did you have anything to say? No. no? <laughs> um, councillors, if you just uh, allow me, thank you, um, Leon, to, for the additional information today. Um, just so that, uh, I guess, to go on record, and, and the information that you provided to councillors regarding uh, the complete budget numbers, because actually sitting inside um, this budget is um, two additional tenders. Uh, for other parts of works that, again, we get some state funding for, uh, but also to seal some other un currently unsealed roads. And so they are um, Pollard's Road and uh, Island Road, um, and there's a total allocation of state funding of 492000 um, and the construction... Uh, Tender total is 627. It's about a 50-50 basis in that um, when you add these together and uh, the other project costs, uh, council is splitting it uh, in half with the state. So really good to see. And I think by doing it, we're, we're actually even saving some money by actually um, looking at those tenders. So uh, can we please make sure that those notes end up in the minutes so that it's really clear how that, alloc that funding is allocated? Because otherwise it looks like... Um, We've made a massive saving in the budget, but we actually haven't. It's actually just split across three, and due to um, the uh, the words escape me, um, the uh, delegations, uh, those those other tenders actually have, don't fall into this report. Uh, back to you, Councillor uh, Councillor, you want something else? Yeah, just want to. Um, I'll put it on record more than anything and just clarify, I'm shooting off the top of my head here, so I'm, that's a question. Was it $180,000 saving? Mm. I think it, think it was for, for what we budgeted. So we, we're now able to um, put 180000 back into the kitty and decide which is the best priority to either save that or spend that on different projects. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Watson, did you have anything to close? It was with Councillor Watson, wasn't it? Yes. No? Councillors, the motion is there before us. All those in favour? Thank you. Motion is carried unanimously. Just give us a moment while we get uh, Councillor Mildred back in. Thank you. Item 8.4 is the tender for retail fuel cards. The recommendation is on page 30 from Council Officers. Um, do I have someone move that, please? Thank you, Councillor Bennett. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Councillor Bennett, any comment? Uh, this is just our tender for all our fuel cards. Um, so we actually do this through Procurement Australia with another 40 councils. So um, we have that collective power when we get to bargain with other councils and that just makes perfect sense to do it that way. Any other councillors? No? Councillors, if you don't need to speak against it, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Thank you. Motion is carried unanimously. Item 8.5 is uh, tender works for logic. The recommendation is there on page 39 of 122. 
Do I have someone move that recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Lowe. A seconder, thank you, Councillor Watson. Councillor Lowe. I'll be endorsing this recommendation uh, tonight because it's, I'm sure it's no secret that I've been a big advocate for the gas gate out at Logic and to increase um, the capacity out there to help with and attract business um, because of the unknown and what we don't know we're losing out there. It's um, a big opportunity for us and with the, the state government um, uh, allowing us access to um, some bushfire recovery mo money to help stimulate jobs and that, it's brought the project forward um, a little bit and I think it's a great win for the community. Um, and I'm really looking forward to see what the, um, the federal government uh, may contribute to, to this project as well, because I, I not only see this as a, a, a local um, need for stimulus, but also a regional need for stimulus. And you know, the, the, the way that the government at the moment is supporting uh, packages is in this uncertain times, I think this would be a very good and ongoing project for them to help support. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, just very briefly and very quickly, uh, this is a long time in the waiting when uh, we purchased the land down there and got the logic centre up and running. There are a few things that we needed down there. One was the gas gate, one was the railhead, which has ticked off and is now active um, on a good transport base and also uh, a good supply of electricity. So um, this really has been so long in the waiting and it's going to bring a lot more opportunity for business to come to Albury Wodonga. Um, yeah, I agree. As uh, the other councillors have said, it's been uh, a project that the, I believe all the councillors have been um, supportive of. Um, having the rate pays pick up a large part of the cost to provide the gas gate for Logic is money you most probably would prefer to spend on other infrastructure in the community, and I get some will think like that. But in providing the gas gate for Logic, it opens up better prospects for, the, for more commercial interest better prospects for land sales and rate with that comes rate uh, income and revenue for council. Um, this in turn comes back to council, improving our financial position, therefore our community uh, and our community with either infrastructure or even debt relief. State government have provided 2.6 million in funding and this is a good opportunity for council to go ahead and get this infrastructure done. It also, uh, there would be an option down the track um, for it, it to extend into the Barnawatha Township, which I'm sure many would like to take advantage of in the future. So um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good um, project to uh, support, so I support it. Um, I support this because of uh, the jobs it will bring in, also potentially, as Council Hall alluded to, the potential opportunity for Barna Wartha. Um, I guess, you know, I still do have that thing in the back of my head that um, gas is a fossil fuel, but it'll be interesting to see this space evolve. Um, I know there's, there's hydrogen companies that have also been interested, so look, we'll just um, watch this space. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I too join the chorus of supporting the presentation of gas to the estate, uh, irrespective of the, the fact that there's probably a whole range of views as to the history behind logic and some people supported it and some haven't. That's basically irrelevant to what we're doing at the moment. We have logic. We have a, a an opportunity to expand the, op the um, potential for uh, industry attraction there's there's a lot more industries out there that would that um, may be attracted to the site with gas and and so that expands our opportunity um, i am bemused however at the fact that we have to go through or, or i'm we're advised in this report that we have to go through a process of public notice in regard to i'll call it the vesting of land in the company that runs this stuff. Um, part of the reason I query this is 
what happens if we're going out to a public notice campaign? What happens if we get overrun by people who come in and object to the to the vesting or the gifting as in the report to to this? It just makes an absolute nonsense of the whole process. I I, I honestly think if if this was a, a a fundamental subdivision development, which in effect it is, it's just being done in different um, stages and different steps and processes. If it were a subdivision process, under the Subdivision Act, the land would be vested in the authority and it would just happen. Um, there would be no requirements under the Local Government Act to do this other stuff. And I, I guess I question um, whether we actually need to do that, but the advice that we're given is that we do need to do that. So um, in order to get the gas connected to the estate, I think, well, I'd go along with it. But um, if, if there's alternative mechanisms to having to ac actually put that out to public notice, um, I think we probably should um, take the alternatives. Uh, otherwise, uh, support the proposal. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, councillors, if you just indulge me a little. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the state government. We've been working with them um, my entire time as mayor and, and probably and just previous to me as well um, in, in terms of helping to secure that funding. So thank Minister Symes for her continued support on this project. Um, I am looking forward to hearing how the federal government may still await and actually uh, support us as well, given that it is a you know na nationally recognised project. Um, Council Mildred, you, you bring up a, a very interesting uh, discussion that we've had and, and it still does absolutely bemuse me that we have to pay for an asset, hand it over and then buy buy back or our future clients have to then buy back the product from them. There is no other way um, and I do keep having a, a chuckle because it is, it's kind of like the height of madness. You have to get a quote from them and then have to run a tender process and there is actually only one supplier. So it's, you know, it's kind of it feels very utopia for me, but it's it's um it is what it is. Uh, the most important thing is is that we're actually getting this project underway, and finally, after waiting nearly two years for a quote from the company, hallelujah, we have it. Uh, so in my mind, let's act and let's act swiftly and get on with it. But again, thank you to the state government because this does save our ratepayer dollar, and I do look forward to hearing from the federal government. And let's keep our fingers crossed that they come to the table as well, Councillor Lowe. Thank you. And I'm with you, Madam Mayor. I think uh, we get on with this and get on with it fast because uh, I'll pick up on something Councillor Hall said. One of the best ways to uh, put downward pressure on your residential rates is through building your commercial rating capacity. And, and so if we um, are able to get this thing up and going, we're going to attract jobs out there. We're going to attract manufacturing out there. Um, and that is going to be the biggest capacity and biggest lever that we have to put down with pressure on residential rates. So that's why I'm um, very much for this project. And as Councillor Mildred said, you know, we, we have people out there that keep looking over their shoulder and looking into the past. But right now we've got a, a foot, I think it's a $44 million asset sitting out there. Yeah, about $44 million asset sitting out there that now currently owes us about $4 million around around that. There's not not many um, municipalities that have an asset like that sitting on their register. And I, th I think it's about $72 million in sales, in future sales that can be gained at present rates um, out there as well. So this is an absolute no-brainer. And I'll repeat, this is a regional centre. So... Um, I'd like our surrounding shires to also um, become advocates with our federal ask um, to make this a co cost neutral for our municipality. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Lowe. Councillors, recommendation is there before us. All those in favour? Thank you. Motion is carried unanimously. I'm looking at Councillor Mitchell, uh, Mildred. No, no, it's the next ones. Thank you. Uh, item 8.6 is planning permit amendment 69 2019A, 87 Baxter Wheelands Road, uh, Barnawaffa North. See you later, Ian. Uh, car parking and display of business identification signs. So it's a lengthy report. The recommendation is across page 50 and 51. Councillors, do I have someone put that? Give us your best shot. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, move the recommendation, but delete 
the um, proposed uh, restrictions on number of persons on site. Council Lowe is happy to second that. So that number of persons on site uh, is removed. I did actually have a question around that earlier today. Yep. And uh, you're seconding, Council Lowe seconding to get that, and over to you, Council. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this, this process has probably been a bit convoluted for these people. Um, they've had to go through a planning permit, which um, I might argue probably could have been done a little bit less onerously. Um, and now they've had to come back to, to deal with the, the car parking issues, which to a lay person would have been seen as being a bit of an issue right up front, given the nature of what's going on. So um, really the, the number of car parking spaces should be waived on a business of this nature or, or waived to the extent that's being requested to be waived and requirements should match the actual activities and, and the reflection of the vehicle um, requirements on site. So um, to that extent, let's support that. Yeah, this is, um, um, I echo Councillor Mildred's words actually. Um, this is one of those ones where we, just talking about lodging, we have this estate and we're trying to grow it, but we should be um, um, making it, um, not that we're making it hard out there, but we should be making it as easy as possible. Uh, you, you read this report and you notice that at one stage they needed 91 car parking spaces under the... Um, um, the criteria, <laughs> the way it works out, and now we've been um, able to, and rightly so, they've asked for a re reducement in that down to uh, down to the the ten. Um, um, and I, th I think on sites like that that are out there, um, this is just a personal opinion. They shouldn't even need to petard them. Actually, uh, I think. Um, Buckshot or something, one of those types of car parks should suffice. But anyway, that's a, a fight for another day. So, and as far as the signage goes, um, I'm all for branding. So, you know, they want to put a big sign out there. I think it's an appropriate area to have signs like that. And um, I'm totally endorsing the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. So, councillors, if no one wishes to speak against this, I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour? Thank you. Motion is carried unanimously. Item 8.7, Wodonga Planning Scheme Amendment, C132, Barranduda Convenience Centre. Yep, I thought that you had one of these. Thank you. Madam Mayor, the next three items are actually have conflict. Um, so, I'll do the whole lot. Fundamentally, this is all about the same organisation that puts me in conflict for all three. Um, and basically, my business has previously been engaged, in terms of 8.7, the Baron Duda Supermarket, my business has previously been engaged by one of the organisations that has made a submission in respect to the application. Um, uh, on the 8.8, .8, the anomalies amendment, um, the same organisation that puts me in um, to the conflict in the previous one uh, has my business has worked for and uh, on the amendment for Riverside Estate, Riverside Estate, I actually conducted work which is the same people again. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, councillors. Item 8.7 is the planning amendments uh, for Barranduda Convenience Centre. The recommendation from officers is on page 59. Uh, it's to send us to panel. Do I have somebody move this motion? Thank you, Councillor Watson. A seconder? Anyone? Thanks, Councillor Bennett. Councillor Watson. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'll be very brief and very quick on this one. This is to take it to an independent panel to uh, have the hearings with all the submissions uh, for and against. I'd like to commend the officers who have put together a fantastic report, uh, very clear, very decisive from all the uh, recipients that um, put in their 
um, they're either for or against objections to, to the uh, planning scheme. Um, so this now goes off to to a panel, independent panel, um, to to make a recommendation back to council. Um, I, I'd just like to say I, I hope this gets on very quick and very fast and clean it up because the Aubrey, from the early days of the Aubrey Donga Bill and of course from the, the dream and the plan to have Barren Duda as another satellite area of our city of Wodonga and, and our region, um, our residents really want something out there um, in this planning. Um, and also the new residents of Westmont, it's a closer shopping centre, so let's hope um, it gets cleared off very quickly for the community. Thank you. Councillor Bennett, do you have any comments? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Does anybody else have comment? Yeah. Yep. Go Councillor Hall. Politics, sorry. Um, I was concerned with this, with the numerous issues around this development when it first came to council last time, and these concerns still exist, especially after reading all the submissions. Um, as I said then, and will say again, I support a commercial development of this sort in Barrandura, but not in this proposed position. Um, I have no personal or any other interests in this de development other than wanting the best outcome going forward for the Barrandura Lameda community. I have concerns that it is in a residential area with limited road access, safety issues being that it is next to a school. These views are shared by other residents in Barrandura and by the Barrandura Primary School with whom the development will broadly affect. Student safety is very important. I believe the higher traffic flows and truck movements are a real issue uh, with where this development will be located. Uh, this area was marked, earmarked zone for residential development. I believe this was for good reason, reasons and it is how I believe it should stay. Uh, there was extensive planning work done over many years for Barrandura Lameba Growth Corridor. Uh, with this came the precedent planning, which was captured in the Barrandura Lameba PSP. Commercial land was set aside for a development of this sort in the um, Barrandura Lameba PSP. Uh, the area was set aside, was uh, planned, zoned and appropriately located in this area for many logistic reasons. It addressed um, issues such as uh, accessibility, location, traffic movement. It doesn't make sense to me to support this development where it is uh, when councils put so much work, time and effort into having an area located in the Barrandura Lameva PSP. For a development like this kind, um, it in the area would be better suited in the Barrandura Lameva PSP it is better suited. It addresses most of the concerns that the um, submissions who uh, did not support the development. Um, so it addresses many of those concerns, traffic movement, safety, accessibility, all which allows for future growth to be developed as needed. Um, it could also be said in not developing, not supporting this development where it is now, um, may encourage a similar development of this kind much sooner and more in the more appropriately zoned area inside the PSP area. Approving could delay the development in this going ahead uh, in forward years. So it just makes sense for me to not support uh, this proposal. Thank you, councillors. Before anybody else speaks, I'm actually going to remind you that tonight is not for decision around your opinion. It's actually around going to panel. So in terms of not conflicting yourself later, having no opinion now is actually incredibly important uh, because you need to be able to read the panel report when it comes before you and have an open and clear mind. So I'm just reminding you, councillors. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm not in favour of the recommendation and uh, I am in favour of option two, which is to abandon. The, uh, since this development was first proposed to Council, it's been plagued with compromise and viability issues. It has been intimated to me on a great number of occasions that the site was poorly chosen, was restrictive and not fit for purpose. I concur with all these statements. Yes, the residents of Barranduda deserve a supermarket. It's just a dreadful shame that these residents only have this stopgap short-term option that is available to them while they wait only just 10 years for the Barranduda Township to be built. So therefore, I, I, I am in favour of option two. Thank you.
Sorry, just a clarifying question to Councillor Mildred. You said viability, Mitchell, sorry, <laughs> Councillor Mitchell, you said a viability, but you mentioned viability of the shopping centre. What, um, how do we know if it's viable or not viable? Sorry. I'm expressing my opinion. Uh, viability, I have looked at and I see that a small supermarket, when it is uh, competing against the likes of supermarkets in Albury, the people in Barranduda don't work in Barranduda. They both work in Albury and Wodonga. And they do their shopping at White Box or various other supermarkets and they go home. Now, if we build a small supermarket that price-wise is not competitive, we will be, uh, we will be building a white elephant, effectively, that uh, will not be price competitive. They will still buy their, uh, their groceries from the, the larger supermarkets in White Box and Wodonga and Albury. And uh, in a very short term, the, uh, the new supermarkets in the town centre will be built and it will be basically the end of that small one. So viability, uh, not so great. Um, I'm just not sure how we get into viability because this, this is about uh, it's about a planning thing, planning issue. But but B market determines whether something's viable or not. So if someone thinks that they can build um, uh, a sunglass factory here, it's up to them to do their market research and whether it's viable or not. Um, you know, if I was going to guess at viability, I would have said the Apco service station on. Um, um, Moorfield Park Drive there wouldn't have been viable, but it's one of the busiest petrol stations in Australia. So uh, I think we might be stepping out of our lane a little bit if we're getting into viability things, but um, I take your point. Um, yeah, just two points, because as the Mayor highlighted, we're not making a decision about whether this is going to go ahead. We really are making a decision about should this go to an independent third um, panel. There's two particular points I just wanted to highlight. Um, that the having the exact location of that in the Barranduda village um, is actually supported in the Wodonga Activity Centre hierarchy strategy. And also um, a demand assessment has been done just in terms of the discussion about viability that does say it is, um, it is viable. And I obviously support this going to a third panel. It's just a no-brainer to have um, an independent people come in and look at all the submitters' issues and, and make a recommendation back to us. Thank you. Before I come back to you, Councillor Watson, um, I think it's important we hear an um, educated and expert independent voice on this. Um, it would certainly add value to my decision making. So I'm going to support for it to go to panel. Uh, over to you. Do you have anything to close, Councillor Watson? Madam Mayor, thank you. Um, yes, I'm looking forward to going to panel and I do appreciate everyone's time and effort uh, putting in submissions because that's an important part of our democracy. Um, and I, I'd like just to mirror uh, what Madam Mayor said earlier, that no, this is not the time to make our opinions on it, but I would just like to add to counteract one thing was that uh, White Bikes Rise with the Woolworths development there, we have a school right next to that. Um, we have, we have uh, residential there and it works very well and that's the way that our communities and our neighbourhoods are starting to grow. Thank you. Councillors, uh, recommendation on page 59, all those in favour? Against, I she is carried. Sure you can. Uh, the recommendation or the motion sitting before us is one that in accordance with section 23.1 of the Planning Environment Act 1987, having considered the submissions received in respect to the amendment C132 to the Wodonga Planning Scheme, officers be authorised to refer the submissions to a planning panel appointed under part eight of the Planning and Environment Act 1987. Item two, that officers be authorised to continue to consider and negotiate submissions prior to the sitting of that planning panel. All those in favour? Thank you, Councillor Watson, Councillor Lowe, Councillor Speedy, Councillor Bennett, against, Councillor Mitchell and Councillor Hall. Item 8.8, .8, Anomalies Planning Scheme Amendment Update. It's uh, for C133. The recommendation is on page 64. But, but before we do that, I'm actually going to have the CEO um, just uh, clearly articulate a little bit around um, 
8.8 and 8.9. I, I think you sort of nearly need to do them together. So, um, CEO, before we, uh, your motion is put, I'm going to open the floor for you. Uh, Madam Mayor, thank you. Um, I, I'm going to come at this as a, as a layperson in many respects, and I thought it was worth just explaining to um, everybody, uh, both listening in the audience and live, um, that these are two, um, both mechanisms to move forward as our city. So um, the first one deals with what's called an, an anom anomalies um, scheme amendment. So what we're saying with regards to the anomalies is that these are fix-ups across our city that are not contentious for anybody involved, and from a planning perspective, they're policy neutral. If something fits in that category, so it's non-contentious, it's policy neutral, then there is a mechanism by which council can go through to speed up the implementation of those changes. That's good for everybody. Everybody, everybody wins in that scenario. Where we can't actually agree, um, where, where different parties have a different opinion, or where there is clearly a change that is not policy neutral, even though we may well agree, we have to then follow that alternate process which is the planning scheme amendment and the normal process. The reason why we do that is, is to ensure that natural justice is there for all parties. And the previous motion is a good example. Um, where we have disagreement, it makes a lot of sense to go through a formal planning scheme amendment. We invite submissions from the community and we hear people in favour and against a particular way forward. And we try and resolve those. If we can't resolve those, we call in an independent expert who works for the Minister of Planning, and that independent expert, in a way, listens to arguments on both sides and then puts forward a well-considered independent recommendation back to councillors for a decision. Uh, so the two next items, the first one is a very straightforward, non-contentious corrections or anomalies um, amendment that can go through this streamlined process. The second one uh, has some issues that are not agreed or are not policy neutral, and therefore we're going out through a formal planning scheme amendment process. We're doing that to make sure every party has natural justice and every party's voice can be heard. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. I just thought that it was uh, worth seeking the clarity around that for uh, both yourselves and the community, wider community at large, and that that went on record. Sure. And this is because when I first heard this terminology years ago, I didn't, I had to Google what it meant. And I know you said layman's terms, but could you explain for those, of, you know, people listening at home, what policy neutral actually means? I can, but I might ask Leon to help me. Um, <laughs> Madam Mayor, policy neutral is one of those terms that hasn't ha doesn't have a very very definite, uh, a defined definition. If I can if I can mix my words, it's largely a, a an instance where um, the impact on the property owner or n the neighbouring properties are not neg negatively impacted by a decision that is made regarding the the change in the planning scheme. Um, there's no there's no significant impact. Uh, it is almost always, as in the case in in um, C133, it is really formalising what is already in place. Um, as an example, there may be a small part of the property that inadvert inadvertently is um, zone or has a small section of um, public park and recreation zone within it, purely as an anomaly, as a as a as a um, a surveying or a titling error, um, this this kind of amendment just rezones that PPRZ into the general residential zone and just fix up small anomalies. We do we do two or three of these a year, um, but they have they have minimal, if any, impact on the general community. I'm not quite sure that explains it, but that's probably the best I'm going to do tonight.
Um, I've got a uh, uh, conflict of interest. Um, it's an indirect. Um, it's for the uh, 8.8, and it's for, my daughter lives in an estate where some of these um, rezoning um, changes uh, are proposed. So that's the reason. Okay, item 8.8, .8, Anomalies Planning Scheme Amendments. So, councillors, I'll remind you, that's the policy neutral one. <laughs> the recommendation is there on page uh, 64. Do I have someone move that? Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Councillor Lowe. Councillor Mitchell, did you have a comment? Thank you, Madam Mayor. You know, again, uh, as our CEO has explained, this is a clean-up of scraps of land that were overlooked due to incomplete records and, um, and mapping issues. So it's just basically a general clean-up. Thank you. Does anybody want to speak against it? No? Councillors, I will put the motion. All those in favour? Thank you. Motion is carried. Can you please get... Thank you. Councillor Hall back in. Thank you. Item 8.9. Uh, councillors, the recommendation is there. We've actually got an insert, so I don't actually have a page number to give you, but if you could find that recommendation, it has two parts to it. So it is the proposed planning scheme amendment for Riverside Estate. That's right, I've got it. I just don't have a page number. Um, and uh, councillors, remember, this is not policy neutral, uh, just so you know. And uh, do I have someone move that recommendation for me? Death and silence. Thanks, Councillor Lowe. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Councillor Lowe, did you have any comments? I, th I think the uh, CEO picked it up pretty well in these opening statements. Um, it's just basically... Um, applying natural justice to both parties. It's given, um, it's going to the planning panel. The panel will have recommendations by listening to to both submissions from the community. Thank you. Oh, Madam Mayor, just really following up from the CEO uh, and Mark Dixon is that um, they've had long um, talks between both our planning department and, and the developer and this is going to an independent panel that can bring back an answer for us all in a clear, defined way, we hope. Councillors, um, I would like to thank all parties, uh, both the developer and also our staff, because this has been going on for some considerable time. Um, some of these date back to 2013. And, you know, we need to get the issues cleared up. One, for our community at large. Two, for the developers so they continue their investment in our city. Um, and the proposal being put forward allows for uh, any parties that uh, f feel aggrieved through any of this can actually um, object and, and seek a planning panel, um, just like we've uh, just appointed uh, in a previous report. So... Um, Important when you can't agree, bring everybody to the table, bring them together with an independent party uh, that can provide good, clear advice to us as councillors to make a decision in the future. Councillors, uh, back to you, Councillor Lowe. Did you have anything to close? No. Councillors, motion is before us. All those in favour? Against? Motion is carried. Radio. Councillors, this is the um, item that we're drawing out of uh, confidential, just so you know. It's right at the back of your papers. Um, so it's actually numbered 17.3 uh, for us. Um, motion. Um, and the recommendation would need to, or the motion would need to actually nominate one of those parties. Please uh, 
at this point um, through discussions um, can we leave the amounts to the side but when we actually do the motion it will have to have the amount in it the final amount that is adopted um, do I have someone put a motion for me that would be you thank you I'd like to uh, move the motion that time talk be awarded the contract on the external facilitator for the annual annual review of um, process for the CEO and that a budget variation of yep six thousand six hundred and forty dollars be approved. Not as yet. Okay. You can't reserve, but you can speak at the end, so you get another shot. Uh, Council Bennett. Sure. So this is in terms of having... Uh, an independent, again, really about independent tonight, aren't we? Um, having an independent come in and uh, help us with the review process of our CEO. Uh, it's really an interesting thing that, you know, councillors who could have a range of different experiences get to be the people who hire and manage a CEO when, you know, quite often really, not all of us have had experience hiring and managing a CEO in a local government. So it's fantastic, I think, that we have some external expertise in this so we can make sure that uh, our CEO is getting the support that he needs but also that our residents and our ratepayers are getting the best out of our CEO. Uh, thanks Madam Mayor. Um, as um, Councillor Bennett did say, it, we as councillors don't actually have the complete skill set sometimes around the table. But I think it's also a great way for professional development of ourselves, but more importantly, for to show um, that our new CEO, um, we can give him some strong um, points of his, his, where, he's, um, where he's at. And um, I think it'll be a great process for our city, but more so for the development of our CEO and ourselves. Council, does anybody else wish to speak to it? No, I'd just like to point out, councillors, that it's actually a contractual requirement that we actually offer our CEO a review each year. Um, given that it's still, I can't believe it's been a whole year. Boy, has that gone quick. Uh, uh, first year in a new sector and first year as a CEO of this organisation, it's absolutely appropriate that we have an independent, highly qualified uh, person help conduct us uh, through this process. So uh, over to you to actually have something to say, Councillor Lowe. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I endorse my fellow councillors' words. Um, probably collectively we've got the skill set sitting around the table to ha all have a contribution to work together, but none of us have um, a facilitator uh, skill set amongst us. I wouldn't have thought um, to the capacity that is needed um, to do such a review. Um, and I think um, our selection of Time to Talk um, is one of the better ones. And whilst we can't disclose figures and sums, um, I think what I can say, it was the second lowest um, tender there. Um, it is worthy of note, though, um, that um, we should put on record, too, that we, we should... Um, obviously, the CEO will go through another review and we should look at the same um, facilitator again and that way we don't have to pay for background work twice. Um, so, um, and hopefully that will be reflected in uh, cost as well when we put it out to tender. So, I endorse the recommendation. Thank you, councillors. The uh, motion is there before us. So I'm actually going to have you read that out again, please, Councillor Lowe, if you would. 
that Time to Talk be awarded the contract as the external facilitator for the annual review process for the CEO, that a budget variation of $6,640 be approved. Councillors, the motion is before us. All those in favour? Thank you. Motion is against. Motion is carried. Okay, councillors, I'm going to put us back to item 10.1. I'll just give you a moment. Look back to your pages. That's the finance report for February 2020. It is for information only. Is there any questions or comments? No. 10.2, planning report for February. Again, for information only, any question or comments? Yes, Councillor Mildred. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it's just I note that um, the uh, approval for 101 Coles Road uh, refers to uh, approval to build above the 230 metre Australian height datum contour line. Um, I'd be interesting, interested to know if the consideration of the precedent that may well have been set by that decision has been taken into account when the decision was made. Madam Mayor, I did send a, a, um, a response out in the course of the afternoon. Um, the assessment officer um, was not in today. I will make sure I get some further information from him in the morning and pass that around to the councillors. Councillors, have you all read the uh, email that was sent out to you this afternoon? So you actually have that information? Yep. On this one, it's for information only? No? Thanks, I'm going to move this on. 10.3 is the building report for February. Information only? Yes, Councillor Watson. Madam Mayor, the only thing I'd like to bring the attention of the community is probably on page 82 is the swimming pool register, um, just to let people know that they have by June 1st to register their pools. Uh, they don't have to have it all finished and signed off by then, but they need to have it registered. Uh, it is a new uh, thing from the State Government, and we did say talk about it last Council meeting, but um, I wouldn't like to think anyone misses out, so um, I'm just raising that. 10.4 is the Competitive Services Report. Again, for information only. 10.5, Assemblies of Councillors. Information only. 10.6, Decisions Register. You had something, didn't you, Councillor Bennett? Um, just on page 97, some change wording. So the proposed reserve names and the road rename, Frederick Street Road, just to have those both those statuses updated to public consultation has finished and a report will follow to a future council meeting. Thank you. We always leave one of those in there to just check you've read them all. <laughs> Notice of motion, there are none. Petitions, there are none. Council seal, there is none. General business, there is none. Urgent business, there is none. There is a submitted Question, uh, CEO. Sorry, I did fly over that, didn't I? But that was actually on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Councillor Lowe, ready, set, go, because I've got you on timer. Thank you. Um, I just want to want to mention uh, a couple of things, um, and, and it is the reason that we're sitting one and a half metres from each other. But I just wanted to highlight some actions that uh, in the community and, and just remind people that, because um, I hear a lot that uh, I'll be right, I won't get sick, you know, if I get sick, I'll be right. Well, it's not actually about you being right, it's actually about you passing it to somebody that doesn't have the immunity system to, to put up a fight. So whilst um, statistics at the moment will tell us that there's certain age brackets that are really good and certain um, age brackets won't affect, th this is not about you. This is about those that are vulnerable in our community. And it's them that we're trying to protect at the moment. And 
the effect, like there's some people that get, are getting a few days off work and that at the moment it's, and, and it's a little bit fun. But right now one of um, the major consequences of this is a lot of the events that are getting cancelled might sound really good, but a lot of these events that are getting cancelled are major fundraisers for, and I'm, I'm going to note the cancer uh, centre in um, Cancer C Albury Woodonga Regional Cancer Centre there, um, and use an example of Cancer Council New South Wales, that um, so far their major fundraiser this year has been cancelled, and and that's a, a four million dollar night for them. Um, and now that's been cancelled. Now they've got no way of um, recouping that. Um, they've, uh, I think Orange has just had their Relay for Life cancelled, so they can't run that event. So there's um, another pot of money that they normally got access to. Even locally, we've got our own Stars of the Border um, that is tossing up whether that runs or not. Um, so, and the reason why I bring this up because this was actually in my pigeonhole tonight, which is the report from Shine, which is uh, a newsletter talking about our uh, local cancer centre, and it's got an, a donate online. So whilst we might be able to get to some of these uh, fundraisers anymore and contribute to our community, those that do have a little spare change might want to consider those that don't. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor, for... <laughs> Just let me do... And I'd also like to um, wish Wodonga Bulldogs, uh, Wodonga Cricket Club, good luck for the grand final at Alexander Park on the weekend. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, there is a question. CEO, would you please uh, read those, that question out? Madam Mayor, thank you. Uh, the question is from uh, Jenny Hilber. I don't, is Jenny here? Hi, Jenny. I'll, I'll read this out for you if you don't mind. Uh, the question from Jenny is, when local councils introduce urban forest strategies, they reduce the urban heat island effect, improve health and well-being of humans and animals, contribute to cultural heritage values, and create more, be be more beautiful vistas, resulting in um, economic benefits. Does the city of Wodonga plan to introduce an urban forest strategy? Um, and Jenny, we will send you a, a written response, but I might just read it out for the benefit of um, those listening in and those in the chamber. Um, thank you for your question um, in relation to the council meet, meeting uh, about urban forest strategies. Council has recently undertaken a number of major projects that give consideration to the issues that you've raised. Firstly, the Wodonga Housing Strategy, which was adopted in December 2018, which includes an objective to strengthen climate resilience and livability through enhanced greening. And there are a number of actions relating to understanding and, and mitigating the urban heat island effect that you mentioned and protecting and increasing uh, canopy cover in our urban environment. Our outdoor operations team have recently undertaken a review of how urban trees are managed and how we plan for more um, planting in the future. The regional natural environment strategy is currently in draft and we're doing that in, uh, in partnership with Albury City Council also and hopefully we'll bring that to the council meeting next month. But it's in draft at the moment and it certainly gives consideration to the role trees play in terms, of urban, in terms of the urban environment, and providing habitat and connectivity for wildlife. Our open space strategy, which is also in draft, uh, gives consideration to the role of trees in providing safe and attractive open spaces for the community use, and the role of open space in strengthening resilience to climate change. The project is currently open for community comment. In uh, addition, we've previously advised at our last community forum how many trees we've planted uh, it comes to some 3,000 in the urban zone, but 1,000 street trees which have been carefully selected and tailored to suit not only the urban streets but the climate conditions that we endure. 500 parks and reserve trees, which were all native. 1,500 trees and shrubs in our uh, sound uh, mounds throughout the city, all of which were not only native but indigenous to the area as well. And outside of the urban environment, in the environmental lands, uh, we planted over 4,000 native trees and shrubs last year. So excluding the environmental lands, we plant around 2,000 native trees and shrubs within the city and 1,000 exotic trees. Uh, so thank you for your question. We're very happy to have some more discussions with you 
but we'll make sure you get a, a formal written response. Thank you. Super, thank you very much for your question, Jenny. Um, and I know that councillors were um, pleasantly surprised when we had a presentation from our parks and gardens people as just to the volume. And I know that uh, you have worked tirelessly as well in part of the Urban Landcare Network Group to actually help us plant some of those uh, trees, particularly up in and around our hills and in our environmental lands. Okay, uh, what we have now is we actually have a one confidential item to deal with, councillors. So can I have someone move that we close this meeting now to the public and online? Thank you, Councillor Bennett. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. All those in favour? Thank you. Motion is carried. Gallery will be out uh, shortly. Uh, we just have this one item to deal with.
Yep. Deb, would you knock on that door, please? Yeah. <laughs> Either that or he's eating all the food. <laughs> Thank you and welcome back everybody. Item 18, we're back on. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, is confidential urgent business of which there is none. Now that we have returned to open council, um, I would like to put that the recommendation that was uh, just reached in the closed meeting um, be adopted by council. Thank you, Councillor Bennett. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Uh, no one wishes to speak against that. All those in favour, thank you. Motion was unanimous. That allows me to close tonight's meeting and hopefully we look forward to seeing everybody on the 20th of April. Please stay safe. Please take care of those in your community particularly those neighbours and friends who may, and family who may be a little more vulnerable. Uh, thank you, everybody, and uh, see you shortly. <laughs>